back to my channel. So today is going to be a mini mystery video. So the first case I'm going to cover is the case of David Blake's disappearance. David was 25 years old when he went missing, possibly at Kennesaw National Battlefield Park in Cobb County, Georgia. Police found David's car on March 9th, so not even a month ago, parked near an overflow lot off of Highway 41. And when they found it, the keys were sitting in the cup holder. It was first assumed that he went up a trail. Hiking was one of his favorite things to do. So they brought in all sorts of search teams and they even brought in dogs to the most remote areas of the park. And unfortunately, they uncovered nothing. There was nothing left behind of his. They didn't find him. There was literally nothing, just his car in this overflow a lot with the keys and the cup holder. According to his friends and family, he was incredibly familiar with the trails on Kennesaw, but when he would go hiking, he would always tell someone where he was going and he always took his backpack with him with, you know, just small survival things and things you need on your hike and that backpack ended up being found in the car as well. He also had a lot of camping equipment that he kept at home and that was another thing he would not have left behind. Had he been going for a night stay, that is something he would have taken with him, but all of that was left at home. So two of the most important things, well I guess three including the car keys that he would have taken with him on his hikes, that he was known to take with him on his hikes, were all left behind. He no called, no showed to work. I don't know if it was the day he went missing or the day afterwards, and his phone showed no activity since the day he went missing, and his bank showed no activity either. Based on different locations that his phone pinged off of, they did main searches near Stylesboro Road and Barrett Parkway and still found nothing. Now, since he was such an avid hiker, he probably would have found his way fairly easily, but he also might have gone into places that were a little bit more difficult, which is why they mainly searched the more remote areas in this park. Also, this park is very frequently traveled, so if he was on some sort of main trail, someone would have found him at this point. So now they are not really even sure he is in this park at all. At this point, they have exhausted all tips. They have searched every area they possibly can of this park, so unfortunately, police had to call off their search. The park rangers will still be keeping their eye out, and they are also asking the public to keep their eye out as well, just for anything small that might have belonged to him or any sign that someone possibly got hurt in the area, but so far nothing more has turned up. Blake is six foot one and weighs about 155 pounds. He has brown hair, blue eyes, and he's a really chill person. They said he was quite a homebody. He doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs, he really just sits at home and hangs out. So they said it was incredibly out of character for him to just kind of fly off the handle and go somewhere or run away. This just isn't like Blake. So they're incredibly concerned that something bad has possibly happened. Please call any tips you have and to 770-499-4111. And if you see David anywhere, please call 911. So the next case, we are talking about Ariel Jeffrey Kuaku. I am probably going to pronounce a few things wrong in this. Everything is French. I tried listening to a couple things on Google. I'm doing my best. All the names I'll put up on the screen so I don't need like 600 comments down below telling me that I said something wrong because it's just a huge distraction. So Ariel was 10 years old when he was last seen at noon on Monday, March 12th, 2018. So again, this happened around a month ago. He left his home in Hunsink, Cardiaville to go to a friend's house. Now, he was walking on his own. Now, he was familiar with this walk and it was only about two blocks away. So he never showed up to this house and he never showed up back home. An Amber Alert was a immediately put in place, but unfortunately by the next morning police took it down because he no longer met the requirements. Now a lot of people are incredibly upset about that. I do understand there are specific requirements to maintain an Amber Alert being put out. He was seen leaving the home, but he technically wasn't seen being abducted. There is not a lot of other information, so the family is trying really hard to have the Amber Alert put back up, but unfortunately I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. His family from the get-go believed that he was abducted, but police say there is so little evidence to really suggest what happened at all that they are exploring every possible option, or at least they were at first. They have used boats, horses, helicopters, and all-terrain vehicles to search Batelier Park, 
which was right beside a river. And this made a lot of people concerned that he possibly decided to go to this park, play around a little bit, got too close to the water, and slipped in. Now, it is cold this time of year in Canada. The area that they were in was covered in snow and a lot of the river was actually frozen over. But if he had walked a little too far out on the ice, it is very possible he could have cracked underneath him and because of the currents and the frigid temperatures, he more than likely would not have been able to get out of the river successfully. Now, the reason they searched Batelier Park is because a woman claimed to have seen him at 2 p.m. Now, from what I've seen, he left a little after noon. I think it was more around almost one o'clock. And according to this woman, he seemed very upset. And he told her, you know, I'm sad. I went to my friend's house, but he wasn't there, so I couldn't play with him. So I think in his mind, because he couldn't play with his friend, he just wanted to go and play at the park for a little bit instead of having to return home. Now, to me, while that does leave the opportunity for him to have fallen into the river, I completely agree with the parents that that could also mean someone had the opportunity to watch him and realize that he was alone. When it came to the river, they have nonstop been searching it. When I first started looking into this case, they were mainly staying along the banks of the river and it was quite difficult for the divers to even search because of the temperature of the water, the ice. It was limiting their field of vision to I think only about three feet in front of them. They had to come up frequently to change out their oxygen. And from what I saw, they didn't find anything, but I know recently they have brought out boats. I don't know if things are thawing exactly yet, but I do know that the river isn't completely iced over right now. There are boats out there. They are sending in more divers. They've brought in dogs, more helicopters, but unfortunately nothing still has been found. At the time that I last researched this, there was a little over 600 tips that they were sorting through and the reward was at $75,000 for any information. Police have been asking everyone in the area to check their backyard behind sheds, anywhere that he might have climbed a fence maybe to get away from someone or just being a kid and fallen and gotten stuck. Unfortunately, I think at this point, if that was the case, he probably would have been found. The community in this area seems to be doing amazing when it comes to helping searches. They have all been out. They have all been checking their areas. There have been donations to go towards this reward for any information on his whereabouts. And at this point, it's just kind of a waiting game to see if they find any sign of him. Ariel is about four foot seven and weighs 90 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black hooded coat, gray pants and yellow shoes and he does not have a history of running away no behavioral problems at this point police do believe that he more than likely got too close to the water fell in and drowned but they still have not found any evidence really suggesting this and his father in particular is really pushing them to look closer into the idea that he was abducted like I said before if he was just kind of hanging out for around an hour since his friend wasn't home in this park playing by himself that leaves a lot of opportunity for someone to have seen him there and picked him as a prime target for an abduction. He is a young kid. This is not something that's unheard of. I know that police don't have really any evidence pointing either way, but I do really wish they would put more emphasis on the possibility that he was abducted. I will leave all of the information and numbers needed down below if you have any information in regards to Ariel's whereabouts. So the next mini mystery is Ashley Nicole Martin. Raven. Now, I was tagged on this just, I think, two days ago. Today is the 3rd of April by a ton of people. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out there at all when it comes to news coverage. You basically have to rely on all of the Facebook pages. So that's where I'm gathering a lot of this information. Now, this is an incredibly strange situation. It is incredibly sketchy and I don't want to make too many assumptions here. It's already very messy as is, but let's go ahead and just dive into what we sort of know. But again, keep in mind, while she is labeled a missing person, there is zero coverage, so I have no sources really to go off of other than Facebooks. I tried to get in contact with her sister, but have not received a response still. So 
Ashley Nicole Martin goes by her middle name of Nicole. She is a wife and a mother to three children. Literally perfect timing. I was just tagged in her missing persons poster, so I'm going to read a few things off of here. She is 26 years old. She has blackish brown hair, blue eyes. She is 5 foot 1 and weighs about 130 pounds. She was last seen at her home on March 30th, 2018 at approximately 7.45 p.m. in Lexington, South Carolina. Now, the neighbor says they saw her get into the car of some unknown person. I will kind of get more into who that person might have been in just a little bit, but her husband immediately filed a missing persons report when she didn't come home. She was literally super mom. I have gone through her Facebook page and she loved her children and just children in general more than anything. And she missed out on their Easter, which as a mother, I understand you want to be there for holidays as much as you possibly can. It's like the one thing we get super excited about because you see your children so happy and excited and learning things and experiencing things and it's childhood memories. And she was not the kind of person who would willingly miss that. But for some reason or another, she did. So a little bit more on her description. She has a tattoo on her side, a nose piercing and various earrings. And she was last seen wearing black leggings, a gray sweater, and slippers. Now, now we're going to get into more of the information around her disappearance, which could, you know, change up this case just a little bit. So, everything on Facebook right now is a little bit messy. She was married to a man, I'm not going to say his name for his own privacy reasons and accusations being thrown at him, um, but unfortunately... The day she went missing, just that morning, she put out a huge Facebook post. She said that he was very abusive to her. He had threatened their children, said he wanted their kids dead. And, you know, she also in this post said that she found her dream man. And he was very upset with her. She says she asked for a divorce. It's really... I don't want to linger too long on this. It's their personal information. But it is kind of important to, you know, her thought process and what might have also happened but that happened in the morning very long very personal facebook post that you know very well could have been her signaling for help to people and also very well could have embarrassed and really angered her husband so there was apparently another couple at the house when she went missing and according to this person on the Facebook post, she, I guess, was kicked out of the house by her husband and was sitting by a shed. They said she was sitting there on her phone. All she had on her was her phone and her phone charger. They went inside the house, I think, or did something, and when they came back out, she was gone. So, a lot of people think a lot of different things. Like I said, messy on Facebook. There are so many accusations being thrown around. A few family members of hers, as well as a lot of her friends, strongly believe that her husband did something to her. Again, she was in love with her children. According to her, he had said he wanted them dead. If she was trying to just run away, which is another likely theory, she would not have left her children with a person who had just threaten their lives. So the family doesn't think she willingly ran away. They think it's very likely he had something to do with it. The people who were there say he wouldn't hurt anybody. He was the one who reported her missing. He's the one who has been trying to help their family, but the family's saying he's not helping and he's guilty. I mean, it's just an absolute disaster. She had met this other man. If she was picked up by someone in this unknown vehicle, it very well could have been him. She could be hiding out with him for safety reasons. Her husband did kick her out of the house. It's very possible she's maybe just scared and waiting until she, you know, is brave enough to come back and get her children and go. It was something she was clearly trying to plan. You know, I don't know all their personal information and at this point it doesn't really matter. It's just about finding her and bringing her back home to her children. She left her purse behind. She literally did not take anything other than her phone and her charger and she was just wearing like house slippers. If you live in Lexington, please, I'm sure first of all you've already heard about this and second of all, please put it everywhere. So please keep an eye out. Please share her information as much as you possibly can. So that is the very last mini mystery for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. All the information you could possibly need is listed down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button to become a member of the family and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Struck down in the middle of I felt a
up something to destroy I tried 